TII, item 395, June 14th, 2016. WWDC 2016, iOS 10 Beta 1. Welcome to Today in iPhone. Yeah, I like it a lot. Today in iPhone. Hey, go away! Oh, yeah. My beautiful iPhone, which I never have out of my hand and that I do everything with and has become an extension of who I am. This episode of Today in iOS is brought to you by Casper. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash TII and using promo code TII. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Rob, and this is the Today in iOS podcast. First up, I want to thank Steve for sending in the music here in the background. Steve wrote, Hi, Rob. Here's a piece of music recorded, mixed, and exported using multi-track DAW from Harmonic Dog and Voice Recorder Pro 7 from Diana Networks. I recorded this using five tracks of acoustic instruments and mixing up with the Audio FX and Voice Record Pro 7, aka VRP7, and multi-track DAW apps all on my iPhone 6S Plus using a built using the built-in mic and cheap earbuds for monitoring. Voice Record Pro is an awesome little audio recorder which does a lot for audio recording, including many exports and save options. Highly recommended. If people like music, they can go to my webpage, valestales.com. That's V-A-L-E-S-T-A-L-E-S.com for more information and content from me, including my blog and upcoming podcast. Stay tuned. Thanks, Rob, for all your great work for on this podcast and for podcasting in general. Regards, Rabbi Steve, a.k.a. Stephen Vale. Well, thanks, Steve, for the music. And folks, I will put the full song at the end of the episode. I also want to thank Mark for sending in the artwork for today's show. Mark wrote the following. Hi, Rob. I shot this with the camera app on my old iPhone 4 at Sunset near JFK and added the text with the app Fontography. Thanks for the podcast. I've been listening since I got my first-gen iPhone in the fall of 2008. Regards, Mark R. Well, thanks, Mark, for sending in the artwork for this. And folks, you can see Mark's artwork in the free TI app via the bonus button for episode 395 or at Instagram.com slash Today in iOS and also as a standalone post in the VIP section and at Facebook.com slash Today in iOS and a bunch of other places. If you have some artwork and or music you have created on your iOS device that you would like to share with the audience, please email me at Today in iOS at gmail.com and please make sure to include which app or apps you use to create said artwork and or music. And again, I'm down to basically no more music. So if you have some music that you've created on an iOS device, please, please, please send it in. In this segment of How Wrong Were They, we have the following quote. Quote, the palm tree will be an iPhone killer. Unquote. Ross Catarzatria, PC World, 2nd of April, 2009. So the analysts, the Technorati, and traditional press all thought the Palm Pre was going to be an iPhone killer. Well, you can't say Apple's not a unifier. Just say it. For promo codes on episode 394, we offered up chances to win promo codes for the app, The King of Triads. If you are interested in this app or want more info, go back and listen to the beginning of episode 394. No promo codes this week. If you are an app dev or an iBook author, shame on you for not sending in your promo codes. A quick reminder, if you are an app dev or an iBook author, email me if you want your app or iBook featured in the promo giveaway segment for free. We just need the five promo codes or more to give away. Simply email me at todayinios at gmail.com and please include a 60 second or less audio review of your app or iBook indicating you are the dev or the author. Also, when sending the promo codes, please make sure to let me know when they expire. Before we get started talking about iOS 10 and all the other things announced at WWDC 2016, I know some of you, many of you, do have dev accounts. And if you are going to install iOS 10 Beta 1, you must, repeat, you must download Xcode 8 and have it installed first on your Mac before doing the install of iOS 10 Beta 1. If you don't, you will likely get error 14. I know about this firsthand. I tried installing iOS 10 on my iPad Pro, and it kept giving me that error. I then went and downloaded Xcode 8, which is 5.9 gigs, and tried to install it, and then saw the message saying I needed to be running the latest version of OS 10 El Capitan. Of course, 
If I or others were patient, we probably would have known to read the big warning on the top of the beta download page, which Apple cleverly worded with the following very subtle message. Quote, important. You must have the latest beta version of Xcode installed on your Mac before using restore image to install iOS or tvOS beta software on a device, unquote. Rob, just slow down and breathe. So I can't report firsthand on this yet, but not that I'm allowed to, as I need to get this episode out before updating my Mac to El Capitan. Something for this weekend, maybe, or one of the evenings later this week. Okay, and now let's get into WWDC 2016 recap and highlights. To start off with, Tim came on stage in a very serious and somber note and talked about the mass killings in Orlando from the weekend and asked for a moment of silence. I will add my thoughts and prayers, go out to all of those that were killed or injured, and of course to their families. No words really can't express the tragedy on this, and again, thoughts, prayers going out to everyone there. After the moment of silence, Tim went into some highlights of WWDC. There are over 5,000 attendees, and over 72% of the attendees are first-timers. I'm not sure that's a positive thing. Tim made it out to be really positive. There are many old-timer devs that would love to be there, but just couldn't get a ticket. Attendees came from 74 different countries. The youngest of the attendees was 9 years old. The App Store is now 8 years old, so she's just barely older than it. And during the 8 years of the App Store, when it started from just 500 apps 8 years ago, today has now over 2 million apps. All of those apps have been downloaded a combined time of 130 billion times. Tim's shirt, by the way, was tucked in. Eight minutes in, Tim brought up Kevin Lynch, also shirt tucked in, and he came on to talk about watchOS, or more specifically, our first bingo card hit. He introduced watchOS 3. Shocker. First thing he highlighted was that it would be much, much faster, watchOS 3 versus watchOS 2, and be able to switch between apps that are active. The key items he talked about to support the speed up in the UI is one, keep favorite apps in memory. Two, background updates. Three, refreshed info for instant launch. He showed an app launching on Watch OS 2 with the typical lag and multiple seconds to launch. Then he showed the same app in Watch OS 3, and it was pretty much instantly launched. It was very, very nice. They added a very cool feature called Scribble. It allows you to text, do text entry one character at a time. You scribble out each character. And that'll allow you to give custom replies to messages right from your I, I, Apple Watch without having to pull out your iOS device. Again, nice, nice feature add there. They also introduced Minnie Mouse Watch Face to go along with Mickey and a bunch of new faces, and they are making it very easy now to swipe between different faces so you can update your watch face to meet your mood or activity rather easily. And one I am looking for as far as features was quick start for workouts so you don't have to reselect your workout length each time so it goes right, gets you right there, and gets you started on that workout. There is a new SOS feature that will allow you to easily call 911 from your Apple Watch when connected to your iPhone or, wi or Wi-Fi. You activate it by pressing and holding the side button, not the crown, and it will count down and let you know it is calling 911. It will also work outside the US, for example, in Hong Kong. It knows to call 999. Once the call is made, then your Apple Watch will display your medical info, so when first responders get to you, your info is available for them. Then Jay came out to go over some more features. He was untucked. He talked about activity sharing, so you and some friends can share their activity progress and then talk even smack with each other, including using Scribble to talk that smack. They added wheelchair support for the Apple Watch for activity tracking and did a lot of work to make sure it works well, regardless of how you're pushing on the wheels, whatever method you're using. He introduced a deep breathing app option where you can track your deep breathing each day. And can now make that one of those things to remind you to do, like when mine pings me that I've been sitting too long. It tells me to stand up and get a cookie. Now, if you have not been breathing deeply recently, it will ping you and remind you to breathe, or at least to get up and get a cookie. 
At the end of the Watch OS 3 segment, Kevin came back on to recap, and a couple items on the recap slides were very interesting. The key is that devs will get much, much more powerful APIs to use with their apps. Apple Pay for your app if it uses payments, uh, background functionality for fitness apps, including real-time heart rate monitoring. But the one thing showed, not really mentioned, speaker audio. So now you could play audio from your speaker on your Apple Watch. Beta of Watch OS 3 is available today. The whole Watch OS segment took about 20 minutes. The next segment was for tvOS. Eddie Q came out on stage to talk about Apple TV and tvOS, untucked by the way. There is now 1,300 video channels on Apple TV versus just 80 channels in the Apple TV 3rd gen. Some of the new Apple TV 4th gen apps channels include Sling, or this is just getting released, and then NBA 2K is coming out, and there'll be many more coming out in the near future. But the big update is for the Apple TV remote app. Now the Apple TV remote app on your iOS device will mirror all your features of the Siri remote. Anything you can do on your Siri remote, you can now do on the Apple TV remote on your iPhone. Plus, also get the keyboard. Siri for Apple TV is improved. You can now search movies by topics. Siri now searches over 650,000 movies and TV shows. But you can also ask Siri to search YouTube, such as search YouTube for French Bulldogs riding skateboards, and she'll go off and find you those videos. Plus, you can ask Siri to show you live TV as well, such as Open ESPN2, if you have that app installed. You just say, well, let's say, watch ESPN2. And it will open it right to it. Live TuneIn will also work with iPad and iPhones as well via Siri. But the best announcement from EDIQ came with the, with the issue we all have. And that's when launching one of the premium app channels for the first time, which you need to do follow a whole bunch of steps to authorize that video channel via going to your computer and entering an activation code. Well, not anymore. Introducing single sign-on. You sign in once, and you get access to all your premium apps on the Apple TV, and there is a page that'll show you all the apps you have access to. For devs, he talked about some new kits that are available, a replay kit, which allows you to record videos of the session and replay later, photo kit to get access to iCloud Photo Library, home kit for accessing devices at home. There is now four game controller support, plus Bluetooth accessory tools for devs. The Apple TV and TV OS uh, continue to get much more valuable every time one of these come out. I'm so glad I have two now, and maybe I'll even try to get one of those two um, set up as a um, beta. Beta, of course, for these is available today for devs and for everyone else in the fall. The Apple TV segment lasted seven minutes in length versus 20 minutes for watchOS to put them in perspective and order of importance. Next up was OS X and Craig Frederici, who had his shirt tucked. First up was the name, and as rumored, OS X is now Mac OS. And this version of Mac OS is fittingly called Sierra for this version. Fittingly, because Mac OS now has Siri support. So Sierra is when you had Siri intros. I will not go over all the Mac OS or most of the Mac OS features, but there are some that allow you to do some crossover with your iOS device, so we'll go over those. First up is Auto Lock. This is nice in that if you have your Apple Watch on and you open your Mac, it will know you have the Apple Watch and will unlock it. No need to enter the password, which means, hey, I could actually add a password to my MacBook, which I have never done for when it's sleeping, just for when it reboots. Next up is Universal Clipboard. And it is what it sounds like. Yes, you can copy some text on your iPhone and paste it right on your Mac. Nice. Apple Pay for Mac. You can now use it when you buy online. Now when online and there's a site that's supported, there will be a Apple Pay button and you will be asked to authenticate the purchase. So you touch on your iPhone with Touch ID and that's it. And well, you can also verify it if you have an Apple Watch as well. Obviously merchants 
first need to add the Apple Pay button, and many big names have agreed to do so. Right now, Apple Pay is available in six countries. In the next few months, it will be coming to Switzerland, France, and Hong Kong. Mac OS Sierra is available today for developers in beta and in July for public beta. And of course, in the fall for everyone else, requirements are a late 2009 or later MacBooks or iMacs and 2010 or later MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, MacBook or Mac Mini and Mac Pros. Free upgrades, of course. Today's um, segment for Mac OS was 15 minutes in length versus 7 minutes for tvOS versus 20 minutes for watchOS. Interesting. Before we get to the iOS update, you've heard me say it before on this show that the nights that I do the episodes, or really early mornings, I record the kids go sleep with mom and I go sleep in my older son's Casper bed. Kind of my reward for a long night, early morning, out doing the show. Casper mattresses are a mix of latex foam and memory foam. No noisy springs to wake up your significant other when you get up to sneak a snack in the middle of the night, or in my case, when you try to slip into bed late in the middle of the night. And with Casper, you get a 100-day risk-free trial period. You don't like it, you get your money back, and they come and pick it up and donate it off to charity. But just as important as quality is pricing, and the pricing is really great. Twin mattresses are just $500. They also have Twin XL at $600. Full for seven fifty, Queen for eight fifty, and then King and California King for nine fifty. That's less, much, much less than my iPad Pro setup. And as I said, you have a hundred days to return it risk free. And if you go to Casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, you'll save fifty dollars off those prices. Terms and conditions apply. This is an American made mattress with delivery right now for the US and Canada only, and it is free delivery. And when said mattress is delivered, it is from UPS in a squarish box that you think, no way is there a mattress in there. But you get a cool little tool to cut open the package. The mattress opens up and expands to form. It is really cool. Just Google Casper mattress unboxing. And with Apple TV and all these new features, you know you're going to be spending more and more and more of your time in bed. Is it not worth getting the best night's sleep and comfort possible? And that is what you get with Casper. So save $50 off the prices I mentioned by going to casper.com slash TII and using promo code TII, all lowercase on the promo code. Again, casper.com slash TII, promo code TII to save $50. Thanks, Casper, for supporting this show and my back tonight when I go to sleep. And now, finally, there is iOS and the new iOS 10 features. And yes, it will be called iOS 10. Craig stayed on stage to talk about this as well. So not only are iOS and macOS coming closer and closer, but the same person is the primary presenter. Craig said it is a, quote, huge release for our devs, unquote, and the biggest iOS release ever for users. And to stay with the iOS 10 theme, Craig went over 10 key new features or updates. First off was user experience as a whole. The lock screen has been redesigned with rich notification and quick interactions with apps, and of course, expanded 3D touch features. There is now Raise to Wake. It lets you see what is on your lock screen. So you just raise the iPhone up, and it wakes up and shows you what's on your lock screen, kind of like how you raise your wristwatch up, which is nice when you accidentally, you know, all those times you accidentally unlock it by touching the home button and you miss a notification, you kind of saw it there for a second, like, oh, what did that say? Um, and well, now you can just raise it up and not touch anything and it'll show you. Um, one example of what you might miss is when you get up in the morning where it says there's a new episode of TII available. You don't want to miss that. Many of the new features in the lock screen require 3D touch, but there are some others that are there for all, such as pulling up on Control Center and then swiping left to see the controls for the audio apps. Um, you can also get your uh, to your camera app even faster from the lock screen. With nothing's up, just swipe left to the and you will get your camera. It'll come right up. No more searching for the camera icon in the bottom right and then trying to pull it up high enough to launch the camera. Now you just swipe to the left and the camera app shows up. And from the lock screen, you can swipe to the right as well and you now get your widgets. 
Once you are unlocked, 3D Touch will add new features to stock apps where you can 3D Touch them to get some previews of activities. Sorry, folks, no lock folders and no lockdown apps. So cross off password protected apps on your bingo card. Number two on the top 10 list of new iOS updates is, of course, Siri. Craig said Siri handles 2 billion requests a week from users. But I wonder what that number would really be like if you didn't have to ask her a second and third time. The key thing is Apple is opening up Siri to devs, which is great because it is a box on the bingo card, Siri SDK, which is nice. For example, um, you can tell Siri to start a Skype call and even do that via CarPlay, which is even better. So you can be in the car now and have Skype calls and not even have to fumble around. Do it all through Siri. Number three is quick type. They are adding deep learning to be able to predict what is the next word in the sentence. So it looks at everything in the sentence and kind of figures, okay, here's what most makes most sense for the next word. And it will recognize the language you are typing in and update the keyboard automatically. Number four is photos. And now they're adding face recognition that's done on device. You can get albums set up for each face. There's also object and scene recognition for better searching. Again, all of that's done on device. There is better grouping of photos based on topics, locations, people, trips. They call it memories. Eddie Q came back this time to talk about items five, six, and seven. Number five is maps because you have to update maps each year now. And this is an all new design because yeah, that's not gonna cause any issues. It is now easier to see what is around you restaurant-wise and even select different types of restaurants. In navigation, and this is key, it now shows you traffic on your route. And you can pan and zoom ahead on the route to see where those traffic conditions may get worse or clear up. And you can see um, food or gas stations near you, near your route that you're planning on going on. And of course, this all carries over to CarPlay. Apple is opening up maps to devs. This means you will have many more features available depending on the apps you have installed and that connect with maps in the future. For he gave an example where you can stay in the map app and go to one table and get food, get a restaurant booked and even pay and even set up for Uber and stay all in the maps app, never leaving. So a lot more functionality coming to the maps app soon. Number six was Apple's music app. Again, an all new design for the app from the ground up. You can really talk about it. It's the music app. Number seven was Apple News. There are now over 2000 publications available in Apple News. There are 60 million monthly active users of Apple News. That's about the same size as the monthly active users of podcasts. As with maps and music, there is an all new design for Apple News. For you is now broken up into sections. The sections are top stories, trending, topics, and then new topics based on what you read, and then featured stories. And they are introducing subscriptions so you can get premium content right inside of news. And there is breaking news notifications as well. Craig came back for number eight, which is a bingo card item from the WWDC 2015 bingo card originally that did not happen and rolled over to this year. And that is the HomeKit app called Home, which of course is for managing all your HomeKit accessories in one app. That is on your home screen and you get to see all your accessories in one place and customized in the layout for you. You can also get HomeKit from the control center as well. So it makes it easy to quickly and, and simply get to the home app and to see, say, who's at the door. You, you have to have one of the video doorbells. Additionally, it will work with your Apple TV to be secure point of access to your home kit accessories, even when you're not home. So you're gonna be able to access things away from home. It also works with the Apple Watch, but hey, if you wanna be away from home and accessing things, you have to have the Apple TV. So that's what makes it available outside of the home. And when you're at home, Hey, if you have your Apple TV, there's a place there where you can control some things. Number nine is the updates to the phone app. 
And the biggest one is voicemail transcription of calls right in the voicemail message screen. So now you can read quickly without having to listen. So if you're someplace where you can't actually play a message back in a meeting or something, you can now at least see the transcription of that. There is a way to filter out phone spam now. There is now a VoIP API, which allows those apps to be on your lock screen and in your contacts as the primary way to call. Number 10, and the biggest update is messages. Apple claims it is the most frequently used of apps. There is now rich links, which shows more than just the link. When you select the camera, it brings it up right away and what is in front of your camera. And Craig had his best comments here, ripping the folks in marketing for thinking, having a bunch of cute 20 young 20 something year olds in front of your camera would be what most people see when they bring up their camera. They have made uh, emojis three times bigger in the transcript of messages. They are adding emoji predictions. And after you type a message, you can have it emojified by having it highlight words where emojis would work. And you can tap and replace those words with emojis. Poor Mignon. She must be going crazy with all these changes. There are also bubble effects now for your messages, bubbles. You can make them bigger or smaller, depending if you're trying to be loud or quiet. You have an option for invisible ink, where the message is private, and then you slide your finger across it, and it reveals the message. You can give a thumbs up for a message, and there is now a handwritten message option, and sketches for messages, and there are full screen effects in messages. Obviously, all these effects are between two iOS devices. And Apple is opening up the API to devs for the message app. So yes, the box where it had devs access to private APIs, yep, check that one. Lots of access this time around for many of the private APIs. And those are the top 10 updates to iOS 10. There were a few others mentioned that did not make the top 10, but they wanted, Craig wanted to mention just to get it in some good measure. And in they include notes collaboration, which means you can have multiple people editing the same note at the same time. There's live photos editing and split view in Safari for iPad to allow two different Safari windows open at once. Thank you, Apple. Some select others that quickly flashed on the screen but were not talked about include read receipts by conversation in iMessages, location suggestions in calendar, discovery on iBooks, Apple Pay also in mobile Safari. Improved auto enhance in photos. New iPad camera UI. Looking forward to seeing that. Avoid tolls in maps. Mailbox column. Bedtime alarm. Sort favorites in news. Male and female Siri voices for Russia, Spain, and Italy. That way, regardless of your sex, you can find a voice that turns you on. Side-by-side -side mail comp um, compose on iPad. Air quality in maps for China. Surprised the government in China allowed that one. I mean, is it going to be anything other than horrible? And finally, faster attachments, sending in messages. Actually, maybe it'll be horrible, really horrible, and as horrible as it gets. Uh, anyway, And I'm sure there are even more that were not talked about or put up on the screen, and I was surprised by the lack of any accessibility features for iOS being talked about or even listed on that screenshot. And then Craig checked off another box for us on the bingo card, privacy and security. He talked about end-to-end -end encryption and other privacy concerns. And he talked about differential privacy, how Apple can do machine learning while keeping all personal data secure. Quote, great features and privacy, unquote. That's what Apple's trying to deliver. Developer beta is available today public beta in July, and full release in the fall. For devices getting iOS 10, and to see if you are getting it, first, does your device have a 30-pin dock connector? If so, you don't get it. If your device has a lightning port and is an iPhone, you are getting iOS 10, or at least you can. If it is an iPod Touch and it's the fifth gen, you'll not get it. If it has a lightning port, and it's the original iPad mini, you're not getting it. All other iPads with lightning ports will. So really, just the iPod Touch 5th Gen and iPad mini 1st Gen are the only lightning port devices 
not moving on up to iOS 10. The whole iOS 10 section ran 55 minutes versus 20 minutes for watchOS, 15 for macOS, and 7 minutes for tvOS. Then Tim Cook came back out with one more announcement for developers. And this is one I'm excited about. It is Swift Playgrounds for iPads. This is a free app just for iPads and those on iOS 10 only. And the app is designed for kids to help them learn to program in Swift. Of course, it's also for adults as well. I will be talking more about this on future episodes as I'm going to work with my son on this. But to me, this is probably the biggest news of the event and the one that will bring the longest term benefits for Apple and the iOS ecosystem. So again, that's called Swift Playgrounds for iPads. So let's look at the bingo card for a few minutes. First off, the ones that clearly happened, iOS 10 and Watch OS 3 announced. Siri comes to the Mac. That one happened twice because, well, I had two boxes with that option. Oops, nobody noticed it. Siri SDK. Improved Siri features. No hardware at all introduced. HomeKit app. Those were all the ones that were clearly happened. Then there was security, security, security box. I think that that it hit it was a hit. Um, they didn't say the word security, but they said privacy and encryption. Um, as is, um, I would say, dev access to the APIs. I, I think that's a check as well. They have a lot more access to the stock apps than in the past. iOS 10 for all Lightning devices? Nope. Did not exactly meet that spec. The iPod Touch 5th Gen and iPod Mini ruined that one. But the ability to delete stock apps. That was not mentioned in the keynote. But, and this is a big but, those already downloading the beta are reporting some key apps are available to, to be deleted. The weather app, the mail app, Music app, notes app, calendar app, compass, clock, stocks, and reminders, all deletable as well. As is the podcast app and the iBook apps, as according to some others. Didn't see any screenshots on those. Though. I will go over all those that can and cannot be deleted for sure on the next episode. But it looks like most of the stock apps are deletable, and that would mean a yes for that box. Sadly, no bingo this time, even with it. As per pay, Apple Pay with iMessages for individual payments, yeah, that one didn't come to pass. That was probably the biggest rumor out there coming into WWDC that was going to be available. I read it lots of places. Other items that were a big no include ability to password protect folders or apps, new MacBook, a new Apple Watch 2, quote, greater than 200 new features for iOS 10, unquote. No one said that number of new features, but he did say it was the biggest for the end users, uh, but I'll say it's a no. Customization of Control Center. Siri will be a hub for HomeKit. Select who can get a read receipt in iMessage. Again, all those are no's. Advanced parental controls, no. Multi-user support for iPads, no. Apple Pay Rewards Program, no. Again, all clearly a no. And then there was this one. Control which apps are default apps. Well, maybe a no. And I say a maybe. I'm going to put it as a maybe. As if you delete the mail app and then only install a single third-party mail app, what happens when you click on a link to launch mail? Does that, by default, make the only mail app you have installed the default app? Will it automatically launch it? Or we get an error? I would imagine... It will, but we have some testing to do on that to see for sure. Same with the Maps app and the other deletable apps. What happens when you replace them with only one other app? Which one becomes the one that gets launched? Or does one get launched if it's if it, the stock app is deleted? Prior to WWDC and just prior, Apple via Phil Schiller announced that one of the changes coming to the App Store was the addition of the use of subscriptions and then a modification of subscriptions split over time. It would be a 70-30 split to start, and then if subscriber was still active on that subscription after a year, it would go up to 85-15 split for revenue. Um, again, and there was also a, a bigger change here, though, is that it's not just the adjustable split, 
but that subscriptions will be allowed in more places. Originally, Apple was very, very selective where they would allow for zombie subscriptions. This is a subscription that auto-renews until the subscriber kills it. Zombie subscriptions are one of the best revenue generators, period. Sure, you can get someone to make a one-time purchase, but if you can get them to spend, uh, or you spend the same effort getting them to subscribe, the revenue increases greatly over time. Most people are just too lazy to cancel their subscriptions. I still have HBO now. I never canceled it in the off-season, even though there was nothing to watch new. So, yeah, people are lazy, and I'm one of them. Yeah, getting a zombie subscription, good thing. Or at least for the devs. Another item coming to the App Store, and this one really surprised me, is search in-search ads. Uh, um, where you, In other words, Apple's going to have devs pay for placement for search results for the first time ever in iTunes. And I don't see that going well. Apple said they will allow for anyone to participate, but I can't see how they keep out all but those with the deep pockets. One of the things I always loved about iTunes, regardless of the store section, um, was nothing was being fee- paid for feature. Um, if there was a feature, it was free. It, it earned it. it. was all earned, at least. Um, at least hand curated. And there was no pay for placement anywhere. Now that is changing. We'll see what happens. But I guess with 2 million apps, it is very, very hard to get noticed. And people are desperate to do anything. But again, other than those with deep pockets, I don't see how this pay for placement is going to help many app developers. Hey, Rob, this is Mike from Orlando. So I think a great feature for iOS 10 would be teaching Siri macros, kind of like Automator for uh, the Mac, um, where you could teach Siri different um, commands like uh, open and download my podcast. And it would automatically open up Overcast or any other podcast app, sync it up, and start playing. And I think that would be a great next step for Siri, and it wouldn't violate anybody's privacy. It would use all the data that's already on the phone. Um, And I think it would just be a great next step, and it would be a lot safer for hands-free driving, so you wouldn't have to sync up your podcast while you're trying to drive. Not that I would ever do that, but... It would be a great safety feature and a great selling point and a great way to use the smarts that Siri already has to, um, to just level up the iOS ecosystem. And, uh, so anyway, I think they should do that. Mike, thanks for the feedback. We are now 3,000 members plus in our Google Plus community and growing. Thanks to everyone that has joined and thanks for the great posts. One new post in the Google Plus community that went up since the last episode came from Storm Garelli, who on June 8th had the following, quote, Oh no, after the Smile Software Text Expander subscription debacle, subscription disease is now spread to a whole new level. This will be so bad for users, purchases. Okay, we all appreciate that small developers need a way to earn a substantial income to enable them to stay stay in the game and keep writing better and new apps. But the example cited in the article really leaves a sour taste in the mouth. The guy is already getting an annual income of $10 million and he's now thinking that the new subscription model will enable him to collect 10 times that. People can't afford an ever-increasing large number of monthly subscriptions. This change means that buyers like me Will have, who have historically bought loads of apps will just have to be more discerning and buy or subscribe to much fewer apps. I think this will work out very badly for Apple's customers and ultimately most of their devs too, unquote. And he was talking about the whole issue of subscriptions and apps. And to which there were a few replies. Stephen Watley replied, quote, I have mixed feelings about this. If a US $29.99 app becomes US $2.99 a month app, that might be okay, yes, in the long run. It will be more expensive to keep using the app, say $36 a year. But if I don't like the app, I can cancel the subscription, so I'd only be out $3 instead of $30. Right now, there are way too many dead apps in the App Store. A subscription model might encourage devs to keep updating and improving their apps to keep subscribers, thus more money coming in. Another example of how many VNC apps have you bought? 
I've bought many. The reason, the main reason is the devs stopped supporting it. So I would see better and more up-to-date VNC apps. Um, then would then that dev would stop supporting that app and so on and so on. The user also needs protection. So Apple needs to add another rule. If a subscriber, if you subscribe to an app and there are zero updates in six months, my subscription becomes free until there's an update. If the dev only puts out piddly useless updates to keep the subscriptions going, then I will be PO'd and cancel my subscription, unquote. And then Robert Spivak replied, quote, this could be a really good thing for both devs and customers. The devil's in the detail. Right now, there is a lot of confusion discussion over whether a subscription still requires change, changing content like a book, magazine, news publication, or service like a cloud-based storage processing or gateway service, or can be anything like providing a steady stream of new feature updates to customers. It was publicly announced there will be 200, be 200 levels of subscription pricing. That means there might even be yearly subscriptions in the $1, 2 and $5 range. I agree that share of wallet will become more important, especially with lots of apps competing for $5 a month space in my wallet. But if some simpler utility apps only want a dollar to $5 per year, I would consider them impulse buys much like the current crop of decent low priced apps. In terms of the dev in the article that currently makes 10 million a year is drooling over the possibility of making 100 million a year. Well, I think that is certainly not the norm and the editor writer probably make a quick call to someone who knew how to get a juicy quote for this article. Well, unquote. And then Steve Wiley replied, quote, I do not want to see per month subscription that locks you into one year of payments, unquote. And Fernando DeLon replied, quote, Apple trying to milk the users more and more. Jeez, unquote. And Steve Wiley replied, uh, quote, at Fernando DeLon, in a way, yes, and in a way, no. For the first year, yes, that's after that, the benefits leans towards the dev. Not so good for us users cost-wise, though, but hopefully overall we will end up with better quality apps and stop this my app, my app 2, my app 3, etc. stuff and have fewer dead apps in the app store, unquote. Thanks to all that had the comments there. Since the last episode, there were also dozens and dozens and dozens of new posts and comments in the TI Google Plus community, which is an Android fanboys free zone and spam free zone. Yep, it is the most civil Google Plus community covering iOS. Folks, go to todayinios.com slash community to join in. And thanks to all 3,000 plus of you already in the community and contributing. Hey, Rob, it's Dave in San Jose. I'm uh, replying to Jeff's request for help regarding his USB uh, music problem. I have the same issue uh, with my wife's car and also I recently had a rental and had the same issue in the rental. So it seems to be standard behavior across a lot of uh, devices in the, in the USB Bluetooth universe. What I found was that it was always playing songs at the top of my music library. So I would start with the song that began with A and the earliest song in, in my library. And couldn't figure out why it would always do that, but I listened to podcasts mostly, so I wasn't too worried about it. But then I got through my podcast queue one week, and so I was went into the music app and put on my favorite playlist, and I shuffled it because that's how I roll. And uh, lo and behold, the next time I stuck the uh, phone into my wife's car, it started playing random tunes. It basically picked up on the playlist. So... What I found is that if you haven't used the music app for a while and it, has, it forgot about what you were doing last in the music app, then it will just start at the top of your library. But if you go in and you select the playlist and you set it for shuffle or however you want it to play that, then the next time you plug in your phone when the podcast, the podcast that you're listening to is no longer there and it goes to the music app, it will default to the last thing you did in the music app. I hope that helps. And uh, take care, Rob. Thanks for a great show. Bye-bye. Dave, thank you for the feedback. Is the email big? Hey, Rob, this app 
turns your Apple Live Photos into stabilized looping GIFs. Surprised it took so long for someone to make this. Had to be Google, huh? Regards, Eric B. And he's talking about uh, going to get.google.com slash motion stills. So again, that's get.google.com slash motion stills. Back to you, my big. Hi, Rob. Thought you might find this article interesting. Regards, John. And, well, it's actually a link to a legal document where Disney, Lucasfilms, Fox, and Warner Brothers are filing suit against the streaming service VidAngel that we just mentioned in the last episode. Seems that while the service might seem too good to be true, it really may be too good to be true, as in they're not actually paying any licensing fees. Oops. We'll see what happens. I'm surprised that app is in the iTunes App Store. Well, it was available. Um, usually Apple's pretty good at vetting something like that. What time is it? It's 2.42 a.m. Yawn. What time is it? Late. 2.42 a.m. Thanks again to Casper for their support of TII. And if you go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII, all lowercase, you'll save $50 off a mattress shipped right to your door. Again, go to casper.com slash TII and use promo code TII. And before we go today, I want to remind you to send your feedback to the show, 206-666-6364. That's 206-MOONDOG. Go record your feedback and email to the show at todayinios at gmail.com. Feedback can be a question or comment for something someone said on this episode, or it could be a question or rant um, that you have about something else, an app, product, review, good or bad, doesn't really matter. As long as it's iOS related, it is welcomed. I'm always looking for new artwork to feature on the show that you've created on iOS device. Just put the TII branding on it and send it in. And of course, we're always looking for more music created on iOS device to play on the show. It's your show and your feedback is greatly desired. And that all said, let me know what you think about uh, iOS 10 or watchOS 3 or tvOS. What did you like about what you heard from WWDC what were you most disappointed about not being announced at WWDC? So tell me what you liked. Tell me what you didn't like about this year's event. And of course, don't forget to check out our Google Plus moderated community by going to todayinios.com slash community. And finally, check out the TII app, which is free to you. Search for TII in the iTunes app store. It's the best way to consume the show and get a push notification each time a new episode of TII is released. It's fully voiceover friendly, of course. Please go right now and download the TI app. And that, folks, is going to do it for us today. Until the next time, I'm your host, Rob, reminding you to phone different. This show is hosted on Libsyn.com and part of the Wizard Media Network. If you are looking for hosting, go to Libsyn.com, that's L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, for hosting for your podcast and for creation of your own smartphone app. The Today in iOS podcast can also be found on the free Stitcher radio app. Just search for TII.